Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you three quick fresh food hacks. And this is what I'm going to do to store some summer fruits and vegetables, or serve them. Um, the first thing, I took a big tray and I put my cutting board in it. And I do that to collect the juices from the watermelon. Because watermelons, as you know, could be very watery. Haha, <laughs> hence the name. Um, then I have here is two bowl covers. The pink one is sort of a permanent, we wash kind of bowl cover. And the other one is just from the Dollar Tree. Um, you want to peel your sticker and this is a serrated watermelon knife now You don't need to use a serrated watermelon knife any knife that you're comfortable with getting through a watermelon Okay, now I will tell you I got this watermelon at all these and I'm so disappointed look how not ripe it is I was so mad From the outside it sounded just like a perfect watermelon. I know it was seedless or so sometimes they're different um, This is just me in my awe of disgust <laughs> That's why I'm not doing anything. Um, and it really wasn't sweet. It was wherever those six points are. Um, had a little bit of sweet watermelon. But um, again, just disappointing. So how to store the half cut watermelon. So I cut it in half um, on the axis. <laughs> and then I cover it with the bowl cover and put it right in the refrigerator. So now the hack is, and this is not my hack. This is one I've seen on Pinterest. Is you cut what would be slices this way. Now, what I have not done, and that's a little bit of a fail on my part, is put the wet dish towel underneath the tray, because you see this tray slipping around all over the place, so I apologize about that. That's a life hack that I just forgot to do. Um, so if you take a wet dish towel or wet paper towels or even one of those nonstick um, pads, you just put it underneath your cutting board and it keeps it from sliding around. But I realized that I was not at a good angle so you guys could see what I was doing. Now, if you have trouble holding your slices together, you don't have to cut them all the way through, okay? You can just leave the very, very bottom of the watermelon rind um, intact if, if you're more comfortable with that, okay? Um, and then we can continue with the rest of the hack. Now, um, my little tip and trick for cutting watermelon is don't hold the blade perpendicular to the table surface hold the blade perpendicular to the watermelon that you're cutting on. Okay, so when you're at an angle, hold the blade a little bit at an angle. You want it to just be perpendicular to the watermelon rind because you want it to bite in the watermelon rind. And you'll see a couple of times, I showed an example, if you hold it straight up and down to the table, it will slide off of the heavy duty skin, okay? And this is what makes this, is these beautiful, perfectly neat little squares. There's no watermelon face. You definitely get much smaller portions. So um, there's a lot less waste. You can eat all the way down to the rind and not have to worry about with kids um, or any of that stuff. Um, so what we're going to do now that we realize that this is want, want of a watermelon is <laughs> wasted my $3.50. I'm not happy about that. Actually, I ended up eating it, so I got my $3.50 worth. But um, what we're going to do is, even if you're not going to just serve this at a party, this is a great way to cube up the watermelon. So once you have all of these little slices, you just take and cut off whatever meat you want to salvage, and then chop the meat into little chunks. And that's great for fruit salad. It's a lot easier than using that melon baller. Um, and what's good is if you serve it like this, then whatever's left over, whatever doesn't get eaten, you can go ahead and cut up in the fruit salad. So when you make like the wedges, then it's it's a little bit more difficult to get the watermelon out of the wedges than it is to get it out of these sticks. Okay, and you're just going to continue, like I said, if you were doing a fruit salad, you decide what size you want it to cut. But because this wasn't really totally ripe watermelon, and there really isn't any really good way to ripen a watermelon once it's off of the you know at cut up or whatever then i'm just going to add some splendor to it to sugar it just to add a little sweetness because there's a lot of benefits to watermelon that aren't just about taste there's a lot of fiber in them um like i said they have plenty of water in there and stuff too so we're just going to sprinkle a little splendor on them to give them a tiny bit more sweetness and it ended up being okay just okay it wasn't my favorite i'm kind of it was like i said i was really disappointed um everything on the outside of this watermelon gave me the characteristics that it was going to be beautiful pink and red and gorgeous inside and it wasn't <laughs> and I'm sure that had I had the time and energy to take this half a watermelon back to Aldi they would give me a new watermelon because they're good like that 
but it was just like where do i store it just so i can so return I'm gonna show it you a couple of different so i just was like we discussed hacks, it and we just like then we'll I'll just get the next I one use and what works for me all right and then you're just going to continue um, so the, the whole way one is and um that's it for the, the watermelon again i'm like i said you can add splenda jimmy was like add sugar to it and i'm like no basically so what this hack was really about how to serve it basically take a straw without making a lot of and mess I'm using on kids' faces. And without waste. To use any plastic straws, um, so my next tip is for strawberries. And again, these aren't my hacks. These are hacks that I've learned from either, you know, stuff from my dad or from food TV or from Pinterest. <laughs> but what you want to do is you want to get your bowl of water, and this is cold water, and I'm going to add some white vinegar to it. Um, Measurement-wise, it, make sure you have enough that it's actually going to add a little acid to the water, but you don't want it to be like you're dying Easter eggs and it smells like um, so much vinegar. And we're just doing this to, to wash the strawberries. Um, I would not do this if I was going to, um, well, let me tell you this one. Um, let them soak in there for about 10 or 15 minutes up to a half an hour and then just give them a rinse and I'm not worrying about drying them because I'm going to macerate them but if you were going to wanted to put these in the refrigerator for your kids just make sure you dry them completely on paper towels uh, before you put them away in the refrigerator okay but since I'm going to cut these up and make like a little macerated bowl of strawberries um, I'm not worried about that I can do them while they're wet all right now, the first technique I'm going to show you, and I don't know if many of you may have seen this before, but this is using a straw. Now, this is a paper straw from the Dollar Tree. Um, and what you basically do is start at the point of the strawberry and push towards the stem, and it pops the stem out. You also do miss the middle of your strawberry, so that's not the best hack. It's not my favorite. I feel it's like a tiny bit wasteful. And then also, like, this strawberry's got a lot of white, which you would normally cut out. Um, it doesn't do that for you. And then you can just slice it with a paring knife. And that's one way. <laughs> what I have here is a strawberry huller. And this one has a metal tweezer type area. And I also have a strawberry slicer. And I got these from Avon. And that's, that sounds weird. But every once in a while, Avon has good kitchen items. Now, you can definitely use this strawberry huller without taking the leaves off. But what can happen is you can tear the leaves and then you have to clean the leaves off. I always just find it much easier to just pull the stem out. Then I go ahead and haul out the part of the strawberry that I don't want. And this little cute little strawberry huller, it's got like six or seven sharp knives there and, and does a really good job. Um, I'm also going to show you then also you can use like your egg slicer. But your egg slicer, sometimes the wires have to be real tight to cut through a strawberry, just a little bit firmer than mushrooms or eggs. Um, and I'm just gonna go at it. I'm gonna go at it until you see me get the strawberry, I mean the egg, hold, the egg holder. Now Tupperware has a strawberry holder that we used for years. And it does take a little, a little bit more meat than this does, which is why I went ahead and switched this. And I'm showing you here how you can just use a knife. That's the tip of a steak knife or a paring knife or a cutting knife. And you can use an egg slicer, which is just another option. So what you do is you basically pull off the stems, you take the tip of your paring knife and or like a little steak knife and you just um, stick it straight in on an angle and you just turn it and then you can throw it through your egg slicer. Now keep your egg slicer and your strawberry slicer closed and pull the fruit off that way is usually the best way to do it because whatever's like not cut through, it'll pull through. Um, but you can see I really do like the strawberry slicer better. It's my best favorite tool in the whole wide world. <laughs> it's actually just really good for this. It even handles gigantic strawberries. Um, what I do for gigantic strawberries is I cut them in half. Um, usually like the strawberry is really wide when it's a gigantic strawberry. Um, so what I do is I cut it in half so it's like almost two regular size strawberries, if that makes sense. And then I put each half individually. Um, and then the strawberry huller is my favorite. Now there is a lot of really, not expensive, but there's a lot of other great strawberry hullers out there. There is even a tip where you can use um, a star tip from cake decorating, like a, um, a number, I feel like it's a number five star tip. It's a real, real wide one. Um, and you could just put it in there and turn it and that does too, but then you have to clean that out and everything. This has got like a, a tweezer inside a silicone strawberry and you pinch it, you insert it, you turn it, you pull it out, you pinch it open and it falls to the garbage. And there's like very little, every once in a while you get a leaf stuck to it, but I think that that's anything with wet leaves. <laughs> okay. And we're just going to do this entire pound of strawberries like this. Now, um, 
we macerate the strawberries in Splenda. The reason we macerate strawberries in Splenda is because I'm a diabetic and I don't need the extra sugar. But what it is, is it's the crystalline sugar slash Splenda that draws the moisture out and creates this great syrup from the juice, the strawberry juice mixed in with the Splenda slash sugar, whatever you're going to use. Um, what that does is it really helps break down the strawberry, so it softens it a little bit and it adds this great juice, um, this great syrup that goes along with it. So great for strawberry topping, strawberry, I mean, ice cream topping, strawberry sun. Why do you guys put up with me? <laughs> it's great for ice cream toppings, strawberry shortcake, um, great on waffles, pancakes, anything. Um, it's not like a compote, but it's just cold, cool strawberries. Um, sometimes just great with whipped cream. Take little cups of pudding and you can upgrade them with some fresh strawberries. Okay. And like I said, this is just a few little like we went and got some fresh fruits and vegetables and I wanted to prep them for you guys. I wanted to show you some tricks that I like. The strawberry, the, the watermelon one, I was so disappointed in the watermelon because I really wanted you guys to see how fantastic it is to serve watermelon that way. But because I was the only one who dared to eat a piece, you couldn't really get a good, the full effect. <laughs> um... So once I'm all done, then I'm going to make sure you put this, by the way, in an airtight, watertight bowl because you want to make sure you can shake it up. Um, you can just stir it, it, the sugar in or whatever if you want to, but I just find it so much easier to just really like give it a good shake and then every day or so um, just go in there and give it a shake up as well. Um, you can use these right away. Uh, honestly, you really can. But, you know, it's always so nice when you let them create their syrup for like a half a day or a day or so. And that's what they look like after two days. Beautiful, as always. And the last one is actually like a snack tip. I wanted to show you how you can make carrot chips. So now these carrots aren't peeled. They're just cleaned. Make sure you clean them really well. But there's a lot of nutrition in the in the peel of carrots, in the skin of carrots. And if you're gonna cut them into chips, you really hardly get to notice that they're not peeled, but you don't waste a lot of food when you do it this way. So I showed you real quick on the mandolin. Now my mandolin was giving me trouble today and I don't really know why. But the trick to making these into like chips is to cut that first real big bias. Um, and then this is just a paring knife and I'm cutting them as thin as I can, but not too thin, because you wanna be able to have them stand up to whatever you're going to dip them in. So now I cut two different thicknesses and I'll show you how I did two different thicknesses. With the paring knife, I cut them a little bit thicker. So this is what chips I would use for the hummus or a heavy duty, like a vegetable dip, like a heavy duty dip um, that had like some substance to it, I guess is what I'm saying. And the other really quick, um, and I'm just storing them in a bag so that they're ready to go for Jim whenever he wants. The other way is once you have that bias cut, you could take a peeler. And this is just a vegetable peeler I got at Ikea. You've seen these before. And it does make it just a little bit thinner. Um, and this is really nice for any kind of like sour cream and onion dip or if you like to do it with dressing. You know, carrot sticks aren't the, aren't like not popular or anything. But you kind of get more of a chip feeling. And if you're trying to psych your brain into eating something healthier than chips, Plus, you get more surface area to hold that dip. Sometimes you just want dip and you, you eat potato chips just to get the dip to your mouth. <laughs> Sometimes you just want hummus. And you don't want to dip a carrot stick in hummus because you get like barely a scrub of, of hummus on that carrot stick. But the real reason I went for this is because those of you who don't know that Jim has um, got teeth that aren't permanent. <laughs> And he sometimes has trouble chewing the carrot sticks. But when I cut them into chips, there's not a problem. So that's it, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed these tips. I hope I was able to show you something new. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And share with anybody you know might be interested in learning one or all of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever we upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.